Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to your WageLock webinar. My name is Charlotte, and I will be your host for today. Today's session will run for approximately 30 minutes with 15 minutes of questions at the end. Question, questions can be submitted at any time in the question box on the webinar's control panel. This webinar is to show you how to effectively reduce the time you spend on administrating your payroll and do away with errors. WageLock, a uh, rostering and time and attendance software company, have been around for over 10 years with over a thousand businesses in many different industries using their powerful but yet easy to use software. WageLock will dr dramatically reduce the time you spend on payroll. Please join us in asking questions on how easy it is to complete your payroll tasks. Our presenter today is Chris Burke. Chris has over 20 years payroll experience. During this time, he has developed strategies and procedures to improve effect efficiencies within payroll offices. Paying over 20,000 employees effectively and on time for many different industries. His 10 years involvement in wage lock, rostering and time attendance software has given him a real insight into administrating payroll for capturing hours worked to producing a payslip. During these years, mainly as a sales ex executive dealing with SMBs, his understanding of their needs in both these areas is exceptional, having sold over $20 million worth of ongoing revenue. WageLock rostering and time and attendance software has over a thousand businesses using their software, which is helping them to improve and reduce costs in administrating their vital services. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to hand you over to Chris. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, Chris Burke here. Uh, today I'm going to take you through the rostering and time and attendance software. In addition into Reckon, I've got Matt, one of our senior developers, who's uh, well averse with uh, the innovation. So without further ado, um, I'll covering today. So first of all, we're going to be doing rostering and budgeting, followed by the employee portal, then various wage lot reporting. I won't spend too much time on that uh, because there's so many reports. Uh, we've got time and attendance, award interpretation, and then uh, the actual integration with uh, uh, Reckon. So let's get started. Okay. So first of all, you're looking at the rostering screen. On this screen, you can view past rosters. Uh, you can start off with a new roster, or you can start off with a fortnight that's already been produced. And we've got templates, and we've got rotating rosters. I will go into every one in detail, because uh, 30 minutes is not a very long time. So if we start in the new roster, we can press new roster. And it comes up with the date range, so it automatically starts from your next payroll. And you can be, begin with a blank roster, begin with a copy from a, uh, a previous roster. And uh, all you have to do is press on the button, press create, and we can start off with a, a blank roster. Now, it'll take me a long time to do a blank roster, so what I'll do, I'll copy from a previous roster, so we can move that to that part straight away. So let's bring up this roster. And as you can see, we're on Monday the 11th of the 4th. And across the top, across the top is the days of the week. So we're on Monday. So this is the existing roster. So really, we're not reinventing the wheel every week. We're just making slight changes if needed to this roster. For instance, if Alice can't work this day, you can right click and clear it. And if you look, look over to the right hand side, our hours and dollar value will disappear. Now to roster an extra person on that day, you can put the shift in, I'll leave a lunch break, and over the right hand side it actually tells you the number of hours you've rostered on this shift. Now to select an employee, you can press select. Now this screen tells you which employees can work this shift on this day. It also gives you plenty of other information. It tells you what if they're full-time or casual, what pay level they're on, and actually the cost difference. So you can look at the, the cheapest person or the most expensive person. 
So this gives you an insight to, to, to the cost of that ship. So let's choose Amy because she's the cheapest person to work this day. So I'll press OK. And now Amy's working that shift. Now there's a number of ways we can send the rosters to employees. The first one is you can email the rosters directly to your employees' email addresses. We can send an SMS and we can publish the rosters. We also have a web portal, which I'll just go into now, because this is part of the uh, product. So I'll log on. It takes them to a sign-in area. So they have their own uh, password. Once it opens up, there it is. OK. In this screen, you can view your rosters. You can do lead bookings. And management can also view sales and wage reports. But first of all, we'll go down and I'll show you notifications that you can put into the system. So you say you've got. I don't know, releasing a new product in a, in, a, in a retail outlet. So you want to get all your staff together. So you can notify them through the web portal. If you scroll down further, you actually can see, because you're allowed to post up to 12 weeks rosters. So and this is how you would view them. And as you can see, it's color-coded on today's date. Even on public holidays, it's color-coded as well. So if I'll just move up to... Here we go. We know the 25th is Anzac Day, and it and it's coloured pink. So uh, everybody knows that's a public holiday. Now, just get to back to the rosters. To publish the rosters, we just need to go out to this screen, save that roster. As you can see, it says the roster's saved. Now, on the right hand side, it says publish rosters. So it, it brings you. You buy email, by SMS, and, and to the internet. So if you press by email, all your employees' email addresses in there, and all you do is press send the roster. Now we we'll go back to SMS. There is a cost to SMS. To the posting it to the internet is um, free. So um, publish rosters. So I just press this button. And there it is, the roster's been published. Now they can go to a particular website and they can have a look at the rosters. Uh, it's not individual rosters, it's everybody's rosters that is posted on there. So individual rosters uh, is by email and they can go through the web portal, but also on the web portal they can see each other's rosters as well if need be. So let's just go back into this roster. because lots of information you can get from the roster. Now, once you set the roster, you can go to your budget tab. On the budget tab, we've got two filters. We've got short dollar figures only or short timesheet. Now, what the timesheet does, it separates all your pay categories across the top, and it tells you the number of hours your employees are working in those pay categories. So pick Elaine Smith, for instance. She's actually working 11.25 hours in double time with a dollar value. So it, it, it just gives you that financial information to be able to roster better because you know that is a large cost to, to employees. So maybe you want to change that. But it gives you all totals in all the pay categories on the right hand side and the total at the bottom, number of hours rostered on for this fortnight and the total value as well. That's in timesheet or you can just show in dollar figures. And there it is in dollar figures. So it shows individual cost per day per employee. And if you're fortnightly, it'll give you a week one cost, a week two cost, and a grand total. Now, one of the most important areas of running a business, especially in retail and hospitality, we have called a sales tab. This information is critical information for any business. You can put your projected sales in. I call it historical sales. You've got your actual sales. You've got your projected wages, which comes from your roster. You've got your actual wages because you're confirming the hours on a daily basis, and we'll get that in, into that into the time sheet. Your actual wage percentage each day. And when it's coloured, it's just highlighting that it's above what you're recommended to uh, that percentage to be on that day. And also underneath, it's got rostered hours, 
actual hours worked, the variance in those differences between rostered and actuals. And we also can do projected sales labor per hour and actual sales labor per hour. So it's very informative uh, information. Now, the system also saves pays. So actual hours worked, so it shows you that the rosters and what they were paid to at the roster or if they were called in off the roster. So it saves up all that information to you for you. And it even saves if they were rostered on and they didn't get paid. So that's uh, pretty uh, uh, unique for uh, any, any product like this. Now, the next part of the system is the time and attendance. Actually, no, I'll go to control first and just show you some reports. I'll just log in because we don't want anybody, it's only administration personnel allowed into this area. We do have hundreds of reports, but we've got some standard ones that are there for you. You always can ask if you need a special report uh, uh, developing for you. Sometimes there can be a cost in that. So we'll go to additional reports. So these are just uh, our normal reports. So you can print staff. You can uh, print leave reports, uh, compare clock on times. So a little bit of HR stuff in there as well. You've got availabil avail print availability. You've got timesheets. This is a, a, an important one, roster compared to clocking on times to paid exceptions. So that's a very good report. But like I said earlier, we can do many other reports as well that, may, that you may request. And this is where you also set up your employees, if you're setting up a new employee. At the beginning, when we first set this up, we get this from, your, from Reckon, and it's imported from Reckon into, into our software. So it's a very minimal setup. But I won't go into too much depth in that, because of the other time frame that we've got. So I'll go to time now. So I'm going to show you how staff clock on and clock off. So underneath the white screen, it, it, it tells you why the, the employees' names are in blue, in green, and red. So blue is that they need the fingers recognized by the scanner. Green is that they're going to be they're clocked on, and red's clocked off. So we haven't got anybody. And it, the reason there's no times against the red is because it's gone past the, it's the following day. So we're restarting again. So to, a person to clock on and clock off, with a fingerprint scanner, this is how they do it. So they click on the name. I'll put my finger on the scanner now. It says good morning, and it registers them. So it's a visual thing for that employee as well. They can see they physically logged on at 11.43. I'll do Fred as well. Fred starts in his shift. Finger on the scanner. Now, there's a number of other ways staff can clock on and clock off. We've got passwords. So they can put a password in there. We've also got ID numbers, a four-pin number they can use. We've also just developed a uh, photograph uh, identification as well, so facial recognition. And one more is our iris scanner as well. So I think we've really covered every single way for clocking on and clocking off. I'll clock somebody else on. Let's clock Jack on. This is by the scanner again. So as you can see, it's very quick, very simple. To clock off, let's Christopher's clocking off, click, goodbye. So very easy, very, very simple to do. And it's good for occupational health and safety reasons as well, because at any time, you can see which staff are on site. So everybody in green, they're on site. So you can actually print that as well if you wish to do so in the bottom right-hand corner. It says print here. So if you've got an emergency, Obviously, if you've got time to print, you can print it off and uh, make sure everybody's uh, at the collection points are there. So it's good for occupational and safety reasons as well. Now, the next step is it's actually worked for that particular day. So in the bottom corner, it says confirm hours. So I'll go into confirm hours. Again, it's password protected. So I'll just type the password in. And what the next screen is going to show you is your pay period or your rostered period. Now, I have Monday to Sunday. Now, you can do any period.
you, we can do weekly, we can do fortnightly, we can do Tuesday to Monday, Wednesday to Tuesday. So everything's covered. Now the reason they're green is because the administration person has physically gone into that day and confirmed the hours of work. So any overtime, annual leave, sit leave on the day can also be done. So I'll go into Wednesday to explain a bit further. Now this is also telling you that's a future day, which we can do as well. So say uh, the administration person is going away on annual leave and she wants to have the payroll ready for integration uh, while she's away. So we can do that as well. So we put a filter underneath the white screen again. The filter says only show exceptions. High staff who won't get paid or show all staff. I like going to the show exceptions because we can set up tolerances for start and finish times, whether they be, and this is your choice, whether it be 5, 10, 15 minutes before start time and after, after start time. So the people who, who've clocked in and clocked out during uh, that to, those tolerances, they've done the right thing. So there's really no point looking at those people. But like I said, you can do if you wish to do so. So we're just looking at the exceptions now. First of all, we'll go to Elaine Smith, the third person down. The black bar across the top is her roster for this day, Wednesday the 20th of April. The green bar is the actual paid hours on the right hand side. Now the orange bar coming down is the actual clock in on and clock in off time. So she was late this day. So she should have started at 8.45, but she clocked in at 9.55. So you want to pay her from a start time. It's simple as dragging the mouse, the green bar, with the mouse across like this. And we've got it set at five minute increments. So now our hours have been reduced down to seven hours. Now if we go back to the top, if you look at Alice Blogs, she's got a roster in there and she's got the, pay, the green bar, which is going to pay her 6.5 hours for this, for this day. But she doesn't have any orange bars for start and finish times. So there's a couple of things she could have could have happened. She forgot to clock on. Now, also within the software, if people forget to clock on, we can flag it. So, and again, this is the tolerance that you guys can set, whether it's 15 or 20 minutes past start time, a supervisor or manager in charge will get an email. We'll get an email and um, it'll tell them that Alice has not clocked on. Now, if she didn't turn up, turned in and she, she uh, actually uh, phoned in sick, you can right click and we can put anything in this drop -up box down here. So we'll choose sick leave. So now that's going to feed into uh, Reckon as sick leave. Alice Jordan is also on the exception report because she hasn't clocked in and clocked out. If you right click on this, there's no sick leave or annual leave in there, which means she's, she's a casual worker, so she's not, obviously not allowed. She, you know, she might have injured herself, so you can choose work cover. But Maybe she just didn't turn up today, so we can right click and clear. And you'll notice when I, I get rid of the shifts, the hours disappear, disappear on the right hand side as well. Now you, Jordan and uh, Jenny, both have got clocking in and clocking out times, but they've got no black bar or green bar. The reason for this is because they've not been rostered on for that day. So obviously they've been called in, maybe because Alice, and, and uh, the both houses, one phoned in sick and one didn't turn up for the shift. So what you need to do is confirm the hours. If they haven't got anything, any hours against the names, they're not going to get paid. So we need to pay them. So you can just right click and drag the green bar across. I've left a lunch break. I'll do, I'll do it for Jenny as well. And again, you can change. You know, if you, you feel she started later, you can just move it. It's completely up to you. Now, Fred Kelly, the reason it's better to pay to the roster is for this reason with Fred Kelly. He's actually clocked on early. Now, if people know they're going to get paid from clocking in times, your wages are going to skyrocket. So we just don't want that. You need to pay from your roster so you can authorize any overtime. So if, if Fred did come in early, you either can pay him or you just came in early, you can just leave it as it is. So it's simple as that. So you can confirm all the hours worked. Now, we've got a sales tab down here. You can actually put in your sales for the day. Obviously, this is 
mainly for hospitality and retail. So once you're happy with those hours worked, you can press OK. What happens now, you can see that Wednesdays turn green and the next button is highlighted. Now the next button won't be highlighted until you've authorized each day, on which we have because every day is green. So once we press next, this is where the system is very intuitive. It actually interprets awards. So we do many, many different awards. Pharmacy award is a very difficult award which we interpret. Hospitality award, retail award, manufacturing. We've not really come across an award that we can't deal with. So it's very, very, it's a great system for award interpretation. It is one of our major major points actually. So what this timesheet shown you is the individual hours have been placed under each pay category across the top. So we've even got sick leave in there for Alice that we, that we just did as well. Now you can do adjustments here, you can view, view calculations, but the next point, and I'm going to get Matt to sit in my seat now because he's going to submit the timesheet and show you how it integrates into Reckon. We've got about nine minutes and I think that should be plenty of time for Matt to be able to sit here and go through that. I look forward to any questions at the end of this session. And here's Matt. We're just changing seats now. So just bear with us. Hey guys, thank you very much Chris. Okay, so the first thing I want to mention to you um, before submitting your timesheets is uh, in WageLock, the initial setup with you guys, uh, we, we go through it with you and make sure um, all this, these settings are set up correctly, but we actually set up where to send your timesheet columns through to into uh, Reckon. So this screen here on the timesheet, uh, as Chris mentioned, is showing you where the hours are going uh, according to the award. Now that's from WageLock's end. Uh, where that ends up in Reckon is based on what we set in WageLock itself. Um, so the column names and everything like that do not have to match what your reckon names are, um, but we do need to tell it where to send those timesheet columns through to. So that's done in reckon settings here uh, in WageLock Control. Now the other thing we can do as well is we can choose whether we're updating those pay rates, whether we're only checking them, which will give you a message to let you know if there is a rate that is different. And we've also got the do not update or check hourly rates. So that just basically will not touch uh, their hourly rates in Reckon. Now, if you do have that option set, um, you will need to maintain the pay rates in wage lock as well as Reckon. So we do recommend either one of the two top options if you're going to use that. Uh, it just makes it easier for processing pays. But there is the option there if you don't want to have wage lock update those rates. Now this screen here, uh, at the moment we've only got one demonstration account in here. If you do process the payrolls for multiple companies, you will actually have uh, a list of stores that you can process the timesheets for and you can also choose uh, which file or how, where that's going to. So we actually integrate with both the Reckon hosted and the Reckon desktop product and uh, it's a very simple process. All you do is put your, you choose the file you're wanting to uh, map to, uh, and then we go into the database mappings now. So this is where we link the categories from WageLock into Reckon. So that's basically loaded all the categories out of Reckon and into WageLock here. So we've got a pay groups that WageLock has set up in the system. These obviously are customised based on your setup, so how you pay your staff members. They could be flat rate, uh, salary, anything like that. WageLock can manage it. Uh, we get all that info from you guys when you first start off. Now, in this bottom box here, so this is all the uh, award interpretation that we have in our system and the factors that they're paying at. Uh, so this is where we actually map through and say, okay, so anything from WageOx end that goes into this casual ordinary, uh, we want it to go into a reckon category that says hourly pay or we can have it going to overtime or whatever category you want. So it's completely customizable. Uh, so that, yeah, so basically you can choose to send it wherever you want uh, into Reckon. 
So this is this is basically how we've set ours up today. So you can see I've got a lot of hourly pays in there. So when I send those timesheets through, anything in these columns here will go into hourly pay. Um, the other thing we can do as well is we can actually assign uh, departments in our wage lot to reckon classes. So if you do want to do job costing and stuff like that as well, uh, it's just a matter of checking this box on down the bottom here. Um, now within departments, if I just show you quickly, <coughs> so departments that get created in the system, there's actually the option in here to choose um, where you want to send those uh, those reckon uh, classes through to. So it's just a matter of checking that on and telling wage or, 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 yeah wage or where which job or which uh, class you want to send that uh, item or the department through to. Okay, so now that we've got our database mapped and our, we've chosen which company file we want to send those timesheets through to, next step is submitting this timesheet. So in this screen here, we've confirmed all our hours, we're ready to go. All we need to do is click the submit button down the bottom here. Now we will get a message come up here that just says that this is going to submit this timesheet into Reckon. Um, you can't make any changes within WageLock once this is done. If you're happy with what you've done, just click the OK button. You get the Exporting to Reckon screen. Uh, now what that'll do is that'll, that's basically updating staff members' rates at the moment. It's also creating a timesheet in Reckon for uh, all those staff members there. So that progress bar update uh, as it's going along. Once it's finished, so it's a very quick process. Um, once it's finished there, we can actually click the OK button and those timesheets are now in Reckon. So now we've confirmed, it's sent across, it's taken us back to the main wage drop screen. If we want to confirm those hours now, it's actually showing up, it will actually show us, sorry, the next uh, fortnight ready for confirming and submitting. So from payroll's end, we take it back to the main screen and load up Reckon. That we sent the timesheets through to. Perfect. Okay. So what you'd normally do in here. So now we've got our timesheets across from WageLock. We go to the payroll center. Now within the payroll center, uh, we can choose to, uh, to send a time. Well, to sorry to pay everyone using an unscheduled or a scheduled payroll. Um, now a scheduled payroll is obviously one that you created earlier and attached to the staff members. So if we go into Alice Blogs, for example, her staff card in Reckon, I've actually assigned her to a payroll schedule of fortnight two. Uh, if if I want, I can actually create a new one and I can and basically enter the details in here, whether it's weekly, fortnightly, um, the name of it, and then where the dates it starts. So I've I've pre-configured that in there. So I've created a fortnight two. So if we actually go back to the payroll screen. Fortnite 2 will be the one that I want to use. Now all I need to do is just click that, click Start Scheduled Payroll because I've already got one there. And as you can see, all those out dates have been set automatically, and all those hours have been sent across to Reckon. So it's very simple. There's not much to it. I've mapped the categories and said send these columns from Wage Lock to hourly pay, overtime, holiday hourly, whatever it happens to be, and it's automatically created it in here. Now from Reckon as well, uh, let's say you want to make any changes to those uh, uh, timesheets. You're not, you're not restricted. WageLock's just um, saved you that time of manually entering that data and working out your award. You can still click on a staff member's name within this screen and assign a different category. So let's say that uh, Alice Bloggs was supposed to get some overtime somewhere. You can actually manually put some overtime in there. So I can say two hours of overtime there. So you're not restricted uh, when using timesheets to having to use what's being paid. You can still make any adjustments that you want to. Now when you are happy with that and you save and close, that will actually um, save that detail in there. And as you can see, we now have some overtime for Alice Blogs. Now from here, all we need to do is click the continue button. That will actually create uh, our um, EFT or our, our funds and our um, pay slips, and you can process from there. So it's a very quick and very easy process. Uh, it's just submitting the timesheets from WageLock, loading up this screen, um, clicking on the scheduled payroll, 
or unscheduled if you don't have one of these already created and the timesheets will be in here. Now for historic information, you can load this screen up as well and there's an enter time button up here and we've actually got to use a weekly timesheet just up the top of the screen there. Now this will actually give us any timesheet that's been created or set in the system for any period of time that we want to choose. So I can actually drop that down and choose someone's name and as you can see here from the 11th to the 17th we've got an hourly pay and in the notes it actually lets you know that this has been created on this date using WageLock. So we can see all the hours, how they've been created, how they've been paid and we can actually um, yeah, view and if we need to we can also adjust that data as well. So the integration from WageLock and Reckon is very seamless and um, it's very quick as well. Now the last thing uh, that you can do in WageLock is we can actually look at historic information, so previously submitted timesheets. And so this is giving us rate changes and then it's also giving us the award breakdown as well. So we can actually match that against what Reckon's got in it. If you ever want to do uh, like checking, you can actually bring WageLock up here and see, okay, so Alice Bloggs has six and a half hours um, into sick leave. If we come in here, we can see that she's got six and a half hours into uh, Oh, sorry, where is she? Oh, did I adjust that? No, oh, where was it? It was in there a second ago, but yeah. So anyway, but yeah, basically it'll show us there that those hours have gone into the specific categories they were supposed to go into. Yeah. All right. So that's, um, that's basically uh, me done. Um, yeah, so I'll pass you back on to Chris. Thanks, guys. Um, I'm just going to bring up my PowerPoint. Uh, we do have a, um, a special on for today. Um, so I'll just get to that screen. So that's the special on, on today. So attendees getting 50% off setup costs of saving of over $400. So if you do have any questions, please uh, start typing. And if you want to contact us directly, uh, our contact details are in there. So we've got a help desk, help desk email. We visit our website. There's a, a web form that you can fill out in there and I'll get straight back to you. Or you can contact us on these telephone numbers. So I want to thank you for listening today and I'll pass you back to Charlotte. Thank you. Thanks, Chris and Matt um, for that presentation. Uh, there haven't actually been any questions submitted just yet. I might just give it a minute in case okay. anyone would like to yeah. submit anything. <clears throat> yeah, I'll just carry on talking then, Charlotte, while you're waiting for uh, some questions. Um, I did miss out on uh, talking about uh, multiple sites. Uh, the system can ha handle multiple sites or multiple payrolls. Our largest client has 70 sites. Uh, the software can be used for uh, many industries, ranging from we do have clients with as, as small as three and four employees. Our average is around about 20 to 25. Uh, the software has been around for, uh, like you said earlier, around about we're celebrating 10 years in, in, in August actually. Uh, which we're, we're very, very excited about. Um, yeah, it, WageLock is a great story. Uh, nearly 1,100 clients now. Uh, we're moving, moving forward very quickly. We have just taken on a new help desk person because um, having so many clients, we like to have a strong help desk. Help desk is very important to us. Um, we want, like to answer the calls very quickly and personally. Uh, and that's because that's what WageLock is all about. Any questions come through yet, Charlotte? There has been a question that's come through. Um, I currently yeah. do payroll for three small hospitality businesses which all use Reckon accounts yeah. hosted. Can this be yeah. ex, ex, can can this be an expense to myself as a bookkeeper and be able to use it with all three clients? Um, yes, it can be used with all three clients. Uh, the expense won't be to the bookkeeper, it'll be to the, the businesses. 
Uh, depending on the number of employees each business is, has got, uh, we base our, our cost on per site. Uh, if this, uh, this person would, would like to make uh, a formal inquiry uh, by uh, uh, contacting WageLight through uh, uh, the uh, website or ringing help desk, uh, we can definitely help that person. Okay, that's great. Um, another question oh, from the same person. So each business would need to pay a setup fee? Uh, yes, there is a setup fee for each site. Uh, be, because it's multiple sites, uh, she will get that uh, special what we've got on now, uh, which is uh, I'll, I'll be able to do that for all three sites. Okay, sure. Did they say what type of Did they say what type of business it is, Charlotte? Or? Um, they said they're doing three small payroll for three small hospitality businesses. That's all. Hospitality. I, yeah. yeah. Oh, that, that's our bread and butter. So uh, yes, we I can definitely help that person if she wants to uh, make that inquiry. Uh, another question is: Can the system manage accruals? Uh, annual leave accruals, sick leave accruals, and long service leave accruals. Yes, it can. Uh, the system does manage an annual leave and sick leave accruals um, and even through the web portal, if I go back to the web portal uh, where uh, employees can view their annual leave or where they can view the roster, sorry, they can actually do the leave bookings through the portal so they can request leave. I just timed out so I have to go back in again so uh, just bear with me as it uh, logs back in again. But yes, they can uh, apply for annual leave through the system. Uh, if they're, uh, here we go. So I'll just show you. So there's, go back to leave bookings, request leave. What they can put in here is, is there's, they have a date range. So they can put the dates that they want to have annual leave or sick leave or long service leave. They can put the dates in here. I've already applied for some annual leave on the uh, right hand side. Now this needs to be approved. Once approved, uh, if, uh, if you are using rosters, once it's approved, it will populate roster. So say the leave is in, in six months' time, when you come to do those rosters, the, leave, the annual leave is already set up. So and the managers, only managers or administration person who's got authority can approve or, or decline those um, requests. But we also do your leave balances. I've just got annual leave here at the moment, so employees can view their your annual leave, sick leave, and long service leave in here as well. So yes, uh, a big tick on uh, uh, accruing annual leave and sick leave and long service leave. Have we got anything else there? Thanks for that, Chris. Um, no, no further questions have come through. I'm not sure if anyone would like to submit something. Nothing else? No, nothing else is coming through. I think we might end the presentation there for today. Uh, thank you all for attending and participating. We hope to see you at the next session. Thanks, Chris and Matt. Thank you very much, Charlotte, thank you. for the opportunity today. Thank you.